Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome. This is the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Your host, Joey, the Italian stallion Murray, joined as always by Russ, the idea guy Morgan. Okay, you asked for it. You got it. July 2020 was our first passive income report. You loved it so much. You said, please keep doing it. So this is the August 2020 passive income report explaining all the good, the bad, and the ugly of what Russ and I are doing within our own passive income businesses, how they're broken down, and um, all the stories that go along with it. So Russ, tell me, first of all, before we get into that, it's good. We're going to have to eat our own cooking here. When you come to us and you say, hey, I want to create passive income, the first question, what is the first question that we're going to ask them, Russ, when they call us? What do you want? And then even, I believe, more importantly, why do you want that? Okay. Because we have to provide clarity, right? Clarity and motivation is the, if you don't have that, None of the, the mechanics matter. Well, I would say it's not for us to provide it. It's for you to gain it. 100%. If you're not gaining clarity for yourself, what is important to you, then you're probably not going to achieve it. All right, Joey, think about how many times in life that you set a goal for yourself and didn't hit it. I mean, you could just use any New Year's resolution that you ever put down. I mean, why, why you got to go there? Like, why... Why do you have to point out that I'm not the picture of perfect health? Like, we all know I haven't. I well, have <laughs> well, I mean, I, I didn't say that you said that you wanted to be 25 pounds lighter. When <laughs> I, I didn't say that. That was you. <laughs> I'm just saying that we've all made New Year's resolutions at one point in time of our life. And by January the 18th have said, screw that. Yeah, it's over. All right, well, so but, but, but let's, let's eat our why? own cooking here for a second, Russ. Let's eat our own cooking. I love how you say that. If I'm sitting with you and you're telling me you want to create passive income, before we jump into the nuts and bolts of what we've done, why are you wanting to create passive income and how much is your goal? All right, so for me, my why is important because, as you know, I love to create. And I want freedom and time to create. Just like everybody, I, I'll wake up in the middle of the night thinking of all of the, the people, the things that I was supposed to do or get people I was supposed to get back to or the people I've talked to wondering, are they reaching their goals? All of these things are, are stuck in my mind. And that, that, that's a, a filler of my brain. That reduces the amount of time that I will use to create and knowing, you know, just as we all do that we, we get paid to help people and the more people you help, the more money you make. And I, I've, I've been to this point so focused on just creating to help people. And that covers all the things that we want. So my why Joey is I want to get to where we have all of our basic expenses and all of our lifestyle and fun expenses covered on a monthly basis. So that way I can pay people to help me with those other things. I can actually help people achieve their goals better by me not being the one having to hold on to all of those things and then be free to go do more businesses. So for me, Joey, it's about 25000 a month. That's what I want. That's what I want. Coming in passively has nothing to do with our main line business. And that number is a, is a good rough estimate of, you know, what I, I want to have without any worry so that we can do all the fun things that our family likes to do. Well, and, and you know, breaking that down, it sounds like a ridiculously high number, but when you break it down by what you need for taxes, I mean, that's an expense we have to account for. I think there's other people out there that talk about, you know, passive income and they leave stuff like that out of the equation, in my opinion. 
Um, the other things are like your, your primary residence, a second home, like those are things that you want. Those, those enhance your ability to do, like have the time with your family that you can't ever get back. Like your kids are only going to be this age one time, whatever. The well, when you consider, is. yeah, well, when you consider as a homeschool family, we get to travel a lot more than probably the average family does. And it doesn't mean we have to, but we, we want to, and we, and we take advantage of it. So that, that is expensive. I, I see those as the experiences that I would rather spend with them today while they're here in the house than, you know, 20 years from now, just Megan and I doing it ourselves. And man, I spent a, I mean, we spent a ton of money on other people, obviously giving in other things, but I mean, my, my gas uh, bill for the boats on any, any given weekend is $150, $200. Yeah. You know, and that's just running kids on the water as hard as they can be run. I mean, it's, right. it, money, it, it, and by the way, you know, obviously there, there's all kind of things into that number, and that's not my minimum number, but that's the number for me. I'm like, if I hit that number, then that means that I don't have to skimp anywhere. I can I can even go above what we do on a monthly basis in certain situations, but it, it allows me to be free because the reality is I want to pay people to cut my grass. I want to pay people to come do the, lay the, um, the flooring on the outside porch that my wife wants. I don't want to have to do these things. Right. And all of these things are going to come up and it's going to cost money. But if, I, if I'm in that position, I know I can do it. And then I can be more importantly, but what my why is, it's not those things. Because to be honest, I could live a lot more frugally than I do and have. I grew up with nothing. You know? So right. it, it, I can go back to that. It's the ability to create, having freedom, to know that all of those things are taken care of. That's my why, Joe. And I, it's what mo motivates me to, to look at these numbers we're going to share today, knowing that these numbers need to get much, much better each and every month. Otherwise, I, I'm not getting closer to that goal. And I do want to go through all the hard work. I am willing to run the marathon to achieve the freedom of my time. Awesome. Well, again, I, we just want to be bringing you along the journey with us and in light of that, you have to know what's important to us and why we're even doing this. So, so that's, I appreciate you sharing that, Russ. Now we're going to break down several, I mean, it looks like a total of nine different businesses that we have, and you're going to probably want to know more about each one. We're talking about land flipping. We're talking about short-term rentals. We're talking about syndications on apartment complexes, our online community, uh, Amazon businesses, so on and so forth. You're going to want to know these things, and in, instead of us explaining each one in detail as we're reporting on the numbers, we're going to just put links in the show notes that will get you everything you want. If you want to just learn more about it, if you want to figure out who's a good coach in that space, if you want to get involved personally, all those links are going to be in the show notes. Go check that out uh, after you listen, but instead of us spending all the time breaking it down in detail, that's what we're going to do. Well, and here's one part to add is that Joey and I do have relationships with some of these people that we're currently working with personally. And we, we may, they may give us a referral fee because you connect with them. And I want you to know that we appreciate when you do business with them and you say, Hey, the guys over at Wealth Wall Street sent me, but know that the only reason we're telling you to go to them uh, or go look at what they're doing is because we're already doing it. Right. right. So this is the transparency level. We don't do anything just to make money. Our goal is if it's is what we're currently doing in our business and in our personal lives to help us, we're sharing it with you. If you end up doing business with these people and, and they uh, give us a referral fee for it, man, awesome. That's even a win-win-win across the board. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. All right, so let's let's dive into first of first of all our land businesses. The, we have one land business that we do with uh, Tracy in our office, and we have one land business that is done for us through Mark Podolsky and his team. Let's dive into TriStar, which is the one we do with Tracy. Um, last month, the income that we we received from that business was twenty five twenty one and seventy eight cents, and the expenses were nineteen thirty six. All right, so we. All right, so let's be out. real clear. When you say when you say last month for the month of August, we we netted five hundred and eighty five dollars, yeah. as opposed to the month of July, we netted eight hundred and eleven. What was the discrepancy? What happened there? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, good point. Good point. 
So in August, we had a big expense. One, we had to refund somebody their entire uh, down payment and doc fee because we weren't able to give them the property we told them that we could. We actually, <laughs> we, we actually bought a, or on paper or, or I guess a handshake, we said, hey, we wanna buy this property from you, uh, sir. He said, yeah, I'll sell it to you. But he kind of dragged his feet on getting us um, the deed, the recorded deed. And so subsequently, Tracy actually went out and started marketing it and found a buyer before we technically owned the property. So what, what do we yeah, tell she thought, Well, she thought she owned the property, right? The person said, yes, they'd already yeah. agreed on a price. She had already sent him all the paperwork. He, it, all he required was his signature, notary or whatever, and was sending it back. She thought that the deal was done. She was waiting to get it so she could literally send him the check to purchase it. And just like this business is all about trying to, to be as, as um, expeditious as you can, move the property as fast as possible. So she started marketing a property she thought she owned, found a buyer, the person gave her a down payment, paid the doc fee, all the different things. And then over the weekend, got an email back from the person that was selling it. And they said, yeah, we're actually not gonna sell it. My son wants to keep the property. And you know, I know I told you we were gonna move forward, we're not. So that, that was a kind of a hiccup. We also had some expenses in there, Joey, which was, I think, a good expense. We, we bought a computer for the, for the business and the, the computer's purpose was to have a virtual assistant that is overseas to be able to go on Facebook uh, on the behalf of us and post ads in the different uh, Facebook groups, the marketing, the buy and sell groups and things like that. And it has to have, you have to have that in order to make, all, make that business run efficiently so we don't spend our whole time doing that or Tracy spends her whole time. So I, I feel like if you look at in the internal part, we actually increased our income from right. 2,500 to 1,400. The, some of those expenses are, are fixed costs that we won't experience again, right? We're not going to have that, that computer cost, at least for a while. We also paid an upfront kind of fee to go ahead and, and pay for this virtual assistance for the first month. But these are, these are things I think was actually a positive in the business, even though we kind of run into some things that hasn't happened. Talk right. a little bit about Everland, Joey. What, what is Everland and how do we do there? Yeah, so Everland is the done for you model of land flipping where we put money in, Mark Podolsky's team runs with it from there, and we just have a percentage ownership in the business. Our income from Everland last month, or excuse me, in, in August was $3,430 as opposed to $1,330 in July. So it was a major increase. Problem is we ran out of in, uh, inventory. <laughs> Well, it, that's a really, this is a fun little project here because this is something where you put dollars in and it starts kicking dollars back out and it does, didn't require a lot of our effort. But yeah, we're still an owner in the business. And as you see, we, we almost tripled our income, our monthly income in just that one month. But yes, you're right, Joe. We, we ran out of property and we sent them some more money so they could go buy property, but you messed that up. What? You messed it up, man. You what stood you him a check about? and it bounced. Oh, well, okay. So opening the kimono here, Joey's a moron sometimes, every once in a while. So as we've talked about on previous uh, uh, podcasts, we use a line of credit against our cash values and our policies. Well, I was writing a check off of my line of credit and wrote it to Everland, got it over to him, and then realized that the bank had not increased my line of credit to cover the cash values that it accumulated. Well, that makes the check no good, by the way. And uh, <laughs> so I had to have them hold it until I got that worked out with the line of credit. Uh, good news that's behind us, but it did delay us about 10 to 12 days as we worked that out. Well, yeah, here's a good point to that is that when you set up your line of credit, make sure it actually got set up <laughs> instead of assuming that it was set up and assuming that all the policies were applied correctly. If you go through that approach and you can go listen to a couple episodes ago when we talked about that, if you do that approach, you need to be a little more diligent. So I, I like giving you a hard time on the podcast so that way we don't ever have to deal with that again. But also it, it serves as a good reminder for everybody else who learns from our mistakes. 
All right, the next thing that we, we got involved in, I, you know, I guess we, we've done this a while, and, and you know, I reported on this last, last month, uh, July, that we had zero income from our apartment syndication that we're in. And I'm sad to say in the month of August, we also had zero income from that syndication. All right, so Russ, uh, I'm going to need you to, to step it up over there. Like, I mean, this, this is on <laughs> you at this point. You know, two, you put up yeah, two this goose is, eggs in a row. This this is not this is not working for me. Yeah, this is not good for me either. And I kind of sat on a meeting on this, and looks like occupancy has been a little low. They had some higher expenses, and so they're holding back the distributions. That I'm going to get, by the way, in the future, I'm going to get these distributions for all of these months that they didn't pay. It's not as if I'm not going to get paid. At least that's what all I'm right. Told. But, but hey, I but appreciate I, you telling people this because some people uh, at, will listen to apartment syndicators, operators, and they think, man, it's going to be just so perfect. I put money in. It comes back to me every month. It's just a perfect thing. But it doesn't always work out that way. And this is real it, life. It doesn't. It, it doesn't. And I think that when if you ever hear someone say, oh, you just put money in, it kicks money out, guaranteed every single month run run fast that's right They're, they need to they need to always tell you i will say the group i'm dealing with i feel like they've always been transparent there's been some things i've been like you really probably shouldn't have told us that because it just shows that you guys made a real mistake there <laughs> but they've always been transparent and I, it's not like i've ever wondered right like i've right. always known what was going on i trust they're going to fix the issue but yeah when you get involved in these syndications where you're you're, you're buying an apartment complex or storage unit facility, mobile home park, whatever it may be. It's not always going to be like I put money in. It comes back to me every month. There is no hiccups. That's right. But, but unless but let's talk you just happen to get the right one, it, that it, it can go bad. I, I've been involved in this and it, but I will say, Joey, the, on the flip side of this, it's given me some ideas after watching our short term rental business explode. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's dive into that a little bit. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, for the month of August, our short-term rental business, which only consisted of us renting one unit. Yeah. Two bedroom it condo. Brought in my my two bedroom 30, condo. Yeah. It brought in $3,900 gross, which was $2,100 of profit. That's crazy. As opposed to our, yeah, our, our first month, that we were in it, we netted about $587. And obviously there was a lot of like startup costs that we had that first month and we didn't have to have the second month, but our income went from 3,200 to 3,900. I mean, it, we, we're seeing some significant increases, which is dumb on a two bedroom um, condo, but it makes me start thinking, why could we not go buy an apartment complex and turn it into a short term rental business? So you're, you're thinking like, okay, I got the syndication deal. There's some challenges of occupancy, expenses, some things like that, that I don't really have a whole lot of control over in the syndication. But what if we put that model with a short-term rental and had like, let's say a 10 or 20 unit apartment complex where all of them were short-term rentals? Is that what you're saying? Well, have we missed a, a rent payment to you? Because you own the condo. Right. Right. Our our rental, our short term rental business is the tenant. Have we missed a payment to you yet? No, I mean I have to stay on you, but you know, yeah, it comes in. <laughs> well you can you can write the check anytime you want to, to yourself, right? But the beauty of it is we know we're gonna pay it. That's that's a given. We don't have to worry about someone moving out and us having a, a you know a thirty to sixty day time frame of trying to refill refill it, paint it. Anytime you go through all that process, you're going to have turnover. And especially when you have long term stay, because there's going to inevitably be issues inside the, the the apartment condo that you've got to fix. I just think, man, what would make sense to us is if we own the apartment complex. So we could get the benefit of all the real estate that we already know, which is the appreciation, the increase in net operating income as we have it rented on a regular basis. We got the cash flow. We obviously can get down the pay down and the depreciation, which can help us in taxes, all these different issues. But if we had all of that, we also then, Joey, get to avoid having to rent out someone else's place that may have a long-term tenant, they may end up turning into a stinking Karen or a Mrs. Kravitz, as my wife would say. 
Oh, so now you're, you're bringing up the, the challenge that we faced in uh, August, and that was we had one of our guests get in a shouting match late at night with uh, Mrs. Kravitz, as you said, upstairs, who was just done with them having too much fun on the back deck. And uh, so we have people surrounding our unit that are long-term residents, obviously, in this condo complex, and they just are not fans of the short-term rental, especially the noise that comes with that in some cases. So to your point, if we had the apartment complex and all of them were short-term rentals, everybody would be there for the same purpose. We'd probably still have some issues with that, but it wouldn't be nearly as, um, as, as prominent. It, it might not be, right? Because, I mean, look, hey, when I travel, I'm not – I'm at a, at a stage in life where when I, when I go inside the apartment, inside the hotel, whatever it is, it's not a nighttime. I'm not right. looking to go in there, turn on the music, and, and start dancing. Yeah. That, that, those, days, those days are behind. All but right. Mo- there, as, a, as a whole, I, I would say most people – who are traveling for a short term are going to at least be a little more forgiving to the moment that, you know, you're around potentially other short term residents and that they'll give each other a little bit grace. But when somebody is like, this is my home, you're now intruding upon my home and your noise is affecting me and my home. I think they're going to naturally have more conflict. So if we got everybody in a place where they were all short term, They'd probably be like, look, it's not even worth it. I'm not even going to be here tomorrow. I'm just going to just go to sleep, you know, turn my noisemaker on, whatever it is, and just move (laughs) off. All right, so a couple other things about Wake Up in Birmingham we don't want to forget. One, we we obtained three new units that were being outfitted and designed um, in the month of August that went live in September. So we have a cool report coming out for September on those three units. But a couple things about that. Number one, Uh, A great idea that our operator uh, came to us with is to bring a local designer that could learn from the designer we flew in on the original unit from California with all the expenses of her team and all that. And we brought this local designer that could learn from her and her team. And now they were the ones that outfitted these other three units. That was huge for us. It saved us a ton of money. Yes, because the first unit, we flew someone who had done it two or 300 times before, which we felt like was super needed for us to see what that looked like. But obviously paying for travel and for food and for them to stay, that, that, was, that was expensive. And having local designers who then was able to copy what they did, it saved us a bunch. We got those three units at the end of August. I think it was like the 24th. Yep. And they had the we we had all of them ready to rent by the first of September. Even one, I mean, here's a story that you know people want to ask about how how is it going. We we actually booked all of these. We did the same exact model with these three u- units. Even though before we we had them available to rent, we went ahead and took the the screenshots. So there was like a little virtual image of what the inside of these units looked like that the apartment complex was promoting and we put that on Airbnb's website. So we were promoting our three units for rent starting uh, September 1st back at the beginning uh, of the of the week like August 24th or something like that. I think it's when we put them on when we officially had access to that stuff. Well, we went ahead and started marketing them. Obviously we showed it being booked out for that week. So then it looks like, oh, this is a great place to go. And we had like coming soon, you know, more pictures coming soon, brand new unit, brand new renovation. It, it had all the different details to it. And we went ahead and booked out each one of those units had ninth book. One of which I, we, you and I got so psyched about is that we rented it for 30 days. The whole month of September got booked by somebody. Right out of the gate. And we were so excited. We're like, what is this? What is this? And our operator was like, well, you know, he had, the, this guy has to come to town because his, his daughter's having a special medical procedure done and they want to be here present for it and um but then the bad news came for us a week later covid struck again and uh whatever um, medical facility was going to be performing the procedure had to shut down due to covid they had to postpone the surgery and uh so therefore we lost that booking but it was still really really encouraging to hear 
that, man, there's a demand for this and it is super quickly coming on board. So stay tuned for our September report uh, as it relates to those three new units. And let me just add this. We do have a fixed expense for our operator. And y'all probably know that, but just making sure we're clear, if we don't scale this business up quickly, we are going backwards about 2000 bucks a month because of that. And so it's to our benefit and to our um, desire to continue to scale this up quickly. Our goal and our hope is by adding these three units that will now be uh, breaking even monthly and then be able to scale from there to get back the initial expenses of having to furnish all these within the next 18 to 24 months. So, Well, and I, let me plug it again. If you're coming to Birmingham for, for any reason, <laughs> please look at wakeupinbirmingham.com. I mean, that is where our business exists. We would love to host you in one of those places. And if you book at wakeupinbirmingham.com and you say, hey, I heard you guys on the podcast, there'll be something special in the room just for you. I can, I can assure you of that. No doubt. And it, no, it will not be Joey. <laughs> it will not be Joey. <laughs> It'll be something even more special. Than Thank that. you. Thank you for All clarifying, right. Russ. <laughs> Um, All well, right, so let's talk, let's talk a little bit about you. You also, obviously, we were renting your your um, condo is what we were doing for that first unit. So you were getting a little bit of income from that, not a ton, one hundred twenty five dollars a month. Looks like somehow you went up on the rent on me. That's right. I said, you know what? Because we are doing this. By the way, this is a shout out. Because we're tracking this, I realized I was going backwards by like twenty five bucks a month on this arrangement with Wake Up in Birmingham. And uh, I needed to take care of that. So we had to renegotiate and go up on the rent uh, to where I now have $124 a month positive net cash flow. And um, so, so we're, we're doing better this month uh, in August as we were in July. Now, I don't like that arrangement, by the way. I don't, know, I don't like the fact that you can renegotiate with me. You, you made the deal. You just need to be a better business owner. <laughs> hey, there's no doubt in that. Today's content is so awesome, man. I just wanted to make sure you knew that there's access to the Q&A from today's episode at wealthwhilewallstreet.com forward slash community. Yeah, you need to be a part of this movement if these are the types of things you want to learn about and be surrounded by over 3,000 other people on the same journey. Let's get back to the episode. Let's talk quickly about the Ethereum miners, okay? And, and we're not necessarily telling people that you should do this, but this is something Russ and I got involved with a few years ago where these mining computers, we purchased them and they consistently um, create, if you will, an Ethereum cryptocurrency. Well, as, <laughs> as that cryptocurrency uh, increases, the value of those coins increase. And we, have, we wouldn't have talked about these things for the last year or so because Cryptocurrency has been really depressed. But in the month of August, we had some success. Rush, you want to talk about that? Yeah, I love the way you said it creates cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. That clearly shows you how much Joey knows about this business. <laughs> hey, it's totally passive. So it, we own computers that solve a problem. And when they solve the problem, they get paid in a digital currency that is Ethereum. Ethereum is like the second largest digital currency behind Bitcoin, probably a name that you've heard before. We get paid in those coins, and those coins translate to dollars. And last month, we brought in $4,219 worth of those coins, and it cost us about $1,600 in management fee because there's those things burn a lot of energy the power right. bill to maintain them and the technicians who just check on them to make sure everything's uh, going well is fairly expensive we had twenty six hundred dollars in positive cash flow from those last month that's going in the right direction as you said joey i love the fact that uh, ethereum's price has increased it is uh, if, it, if it get back to a thousand dollars you and i are going to be dancing if no it doubt. goes any higher, then then we're going to be selling. But I, I like that. <laughs> I, I like that that is an option. I'm not telling you to go buy these computers. We've owned them for two years now, and we just brought a couple more back on board. We were actually had three units that we were not even 
we were not even mining for quite a while because the price to maintain them was more than what they were actually producing. But since the price of Ethereum has gone up, we went ahead in the month of August and said, yep, yeah, let's go ahead and switch that arrangement. We want to start mining those again, start paying the bill. And it was a profitable enterprise. All right, moving forward. We also run a community, the Wealth Lot Wall Street community. I hope that you're already a member of this. If you're not, go to wealthlotwallstreet.com forward slash community, join. It is free. There's so much content in there that you will never feel like you don't have access to the tools needed to help you become financially free. You've got a network of people to, to uh, do business with. We also in there have different groups, and one of our groups is our inner circle. Our inner circle, Joey, gives people a deeper insight. It, it gives them access to you and I. So that from that, they they pay to be in there. We we um, we brought some revenue in from the community last month as well. Yeah. So last, or excuse me, the month of August, the revenue was two thousand one hundred seventy eight dollars. Uh, we do have an expense for running this. In fact, uh, the entire bill <laughs> came due in uh, July, but we were able to, as we spread that over the course of the year, it's $2,500 a month for us to to run this thing, not including some of our, our man hours and time and marketing and so on and so forth. So we need to potentially even increase that. But as of right now, that shows us at a loss of $321.80 for the month of August. Which I think is important. Like sometimes we we have these great ideas and we're like, man, you know, I, I hear people make money on websites. I should do that. You have to factor in all the cost. And this is one of those right now we feel like is a labor of love and we love this community and we want to pour into it so much, even though it's currently on a monthly basis technically losing money. We have no doubt that as people find out about this, as you go deeper into this, you're going to want to participate in some of the things to come. And it's going to be a revenue center. I have full um, confidence that you're going to see so much value out of it. It's going to create value and dollars fall of value, Joey. So That's right. you just wait. I, I know this is going to come back to us and we're going to be better. Uh, but speaking of losing money, <laughs> what about the unicorns, dude? <laughs> well, speaking of websites that appear like man it's just going to make so much money it's so easy you just you're just drop shipping like that's what i bought 100 unicorns.com it's a drop shipping business but it also is transitioning to an amazon business i keep saying that but i'm going to go ahead and share with you that our income last month or excuse me august of 2020 was 12 45 43 and our expenses, unfortunately, were $2,231. So we lost $986. Now, why was it? Reason is I don't understand Google ads. I'm going to go ahead and say that's one of the <laughs> biggest expenses because I'm learning. I'm, I'm working with my coach, um, Neil Twa, who is helping me to figure out how to make this part profitable. But he's also connecting me on the Amazon side where we are going to be white labeling 100 Unicorns products from india and by the way there's challenges with that right just communication challenges delays on shipping delays on um, creating the materials and getting things approved so i'm waiting currently just to update you russ on some duvet covers and some backpacks that are being created in india and once i get some samples in hand then he's going to ship me a hundred of each one of these items that then I will finally be able to get onto Amazon. So that's okay, what so I'm let, keeping hope Can I ask a question there? All right. So I, I know that if you get it on Amazon, clearly Amazon is going to do all the marketing for you. Right now you're paying, you said $25 for every customer acquired. And I'm going to assume in you're, you're not probably making $25 on some of these products you're selling. That's right. Yeah. So this is why yeah. I, 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 need to, I need to tweak the Google ads and I need to get deeper into yeah. this. Well, you don't need to tweak Google ads. You need to get your, your buddy over in India to freaking pick up the pays and get you that stuff so you can sell it on Amazon. I mean, the reality is Amazon's going to be so much better of an option for you because they market it for you. And then you're selling a known product at a known price with a known profit margin. And that's when, by the way, I'm going to jump into the business with you when you actually get to that point. At this point, I have no interest in being a part of that with you. I'm going to let you continue to sink and until you do that, but hopefully I'll give you enough grief 
where it'll eventually happen and then we'll we'll be profitable in this together. But I, I do have a question of it, and I'm curious, and I, I don't know if the person driving down the road is curious as well. So when he sends you a hundred unicorn backpacks, I, I just cannot imagine this showing up at the Murray household and, and how pretty much every one of your girls are gonna be like, Okay, this one's mine. <laughs> Maybe so you you end up with ninety five backpacks to be sold <laughs> after they all get their own. Are you gonna send this? Are you gonna have like a warehouse that you're gonna hold this at your house? And then when somebody puts an order, your oldest daughter Annie's gonna like put it in a box and ship it to them. Tell me what? How does that really work? No, so I, I I can't speak from experience yet, but I can speak from what Neil and Reed and the guys that are working with us on this uh, are share with me that this will all be fulfilled by Amazon. So I'm going to have it shipped from India to a, like a third party processor that once it's been uh, purchased on Amazon will be fulfilled by that other group. And the, the margins are having to accommodate for that extra expense, but it's certainly keeping it from me being the bottleneck, as you can imagine, um, being involved in between that would be bad news for the business. So having that all be run on its own is exactly what we're headed towards. So you will send it to a warehouse, a, a shipping group, and when it's ordered, they just get notification and they box it up and put it in the mail. 100%. Yep. All right. Well, we need to get 100% on 100 unicorns. <laughs> that needs to happen. Like I'm going to go ahead and you know challenge right you right now to be emailing that joker and saying, where are we at? Well, I'm going to say this though, Russ, the buy-in on this business is really a discount right now. Okay. Cause once we get up to where it's on Amazon and all that, like your buy-in is going to have to go through the roof. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now. So you either buy in now or you buy in later, it's up to you, but there's going to be definitely an increase that you're going to have to take in. I have a feeling, I have a feeling it's it such at a discount right now. You'd be paying me to be a partner in it. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, this, all right. So the last thing that we're reporting on this month is affiliates. As you know, there are things and services and courses and books that we, we talk about and have talked about in the past. I want to highlight just to this time, that that is something that we love and that is the Tuttle Twins books. And if you're you have kids that are anywhere between five and fifteen, I think these books are, are amazing ways for you to teach them about some of the, the freedom and liberties that we enjoy as Americans and ways that we can think differently and potentially even create little entrepreneurs. I, I would encourage you to get these books. Yeah, we'll we'll put the link in here where if you, if you go and do that, then you are able to take advantage of it and you can, um, by buying it, we get a little small um, commission or referral fee. And the other thing is an app that I use every single day during the week. I go work out and if you're like me, you don't want to pay for a personal trainer because you really don't want any dudes that close to you, <laughs> but you want to have something that you can follow, a process. And I have a couple of guys I work out with here locally, but also um, there's a big, net, big network of people. And we use this one guy's app. It's Tom Nicola at TomNicola.com. He writes amazing um, articles on fitness and on health. And hey, he will get political with you as well sometimes, but I, I don't mind that. But it, I, I love his app because it tells me exactly what to do every single time we're there. And I work way harder following that app because there's someone else. He has a, a leaderboard every every day on a different exercise and you know me joey like i've never turned down a challenge and so whenever i see you know other guys <laughs> have, have, have done a certain amount of weight i'm pushing myself and i am stronger i am not saying this for any other reason than just the truth i am stronger today than i've ever been in my life and i was like a you know a high school athlete and spent a lot of time uh, working out and doing those things, but I am stronger in lifting weights today than I've ever been. And I know you can't look, you can't look at me uh, too much. I look like a two iron, but I am. And it's, and it's because of following Tom's exercise routine. So I'm going to definitely plug that. I'd love to have a couple of you guys join that app and be on that leaderboard and, uh, and work out with me virtually, if you will. And, and other guys across the country that are doing this. So if you need um, some motivation to, to get in the gym, and 
to, to do some things and, and you maybe don't have a partner and you don't want to have some creepy dude, you know, put his hand on your back as you're doing squats. Here, here's, here's, here's a way to get involved with the group and, and do it uh, knowing that, Hey, you're not going to hurt yourself because you're following uh, a professional trainer's advice and nutritionist advice. So, so on those two affiliate programs, uh, we got a total of like $112 last month, nothing to write home about, but certainly something that didn't take any of our time. And so it's certainly passive. So if we round everything out, uh, including our expenses, our income from all these different places. And again, if you want to learn about these, the links are in the show notes, go there. Uh, again, we don't have time to explain everything in detail, but you just want to get to those and you can find out more. The total net income on everything was $3,502, which was an increase from July of 2020 uh, was 2447. And by the way, just, just to clarify, if you do go to our July 2020 episode, we did not account for the community expense of $2,500. And so those numbers have been updated for this report. And uh, anyway, just don't want to mislead in any way. So yeah, this month, or August 2020, we went up to 3502. And it's just about to get exciting from here. So if you love this, yep. let us know. If you hate this, yep. let us know. If you have an idea of how Russ and I can go buy an apartment complex to do short-term rentals in, and you have the, the idea of ideas, email us, info at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com, or join the app and hit us up with a message, a private message. We are always open to that, and we welcome you to do that. Thank you so much for listening to our show, and uh, we'll see you next week. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.